Well, Madden fans and football fans alike, it's February, so you know what that means. The Patriots are recent world champions. Yeah, I know. It's about as exciting as I made it sound. And the snooze fest that was 53's actual game wasn't any better. In this year's defensive battle, we didn't even see a touchdown until the fourth quarter. It's the same play three times in a row. What's that, Tony? The same play three times in a row? At least the Patriots will be kicked out of the league next year for not running sim. Giselle's happy. Giselle's happy. I'm happy for Giselle. I'm happy for Tom. I'm happy for the whole Patriots organization. Hold up. What did I just say? Not really, man. I was kind of rooting for the Rams, but Sony Michelle did help me win my fantasy league. And also, I didn't realize this before the game, but the Patriots winning their sixth Super Bowl now means that Pittsburgh Steelers fans can no longer claim that they have the most Super Bowls. It's now a tie. And we all know that a tie is not nearly as good as being in first all by yourself. Now that the NFL season is wrapped up, let's go ahead and summarize the Madden ratings for the year. Talk about the good, the bad, the ugly, the most improved, and the biggest losers. So stay tuned. So in Madden 18, the story of the year was obviously Alvin Kamara, who started the season, the Madden year, basically on the Saints practice squad. He had a 76 overall, 88 speed, and 90 excel. He was a rookie last year, and he was very limited until the Saints traded Adrian Peterson. We really didn't get to see what he was made of, but then the rest is history. He's a household name now. Here's what he finished at. His excel is through the roof because we all know the magic he brings to the field. And on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I'm sorry Titans fans, DeMarco Murray started as a top five running back, 91 overall, and fell throughout the year all the way to a low 80s. So what about 19? There was seven guys that started in the all coveted 99 overall club. If you're not a Madden fan, that is the highest rating. There is no 100. It is 99 is maxed out. While none of these seven fell too far, only two of them maintained their elite 99 overall status. And actually, two newcomers throughout the year proved themselves that they were worthy of the 99 club. So if you honestly don't know, maybe you're just a casual Madden fan, pause the video, comment below which two you think remain, who the two new kids on the block might be. Aaron Donald's one of the two that remained at the 99. Just too short of Michael Strahan's single season sack record, also winning Defensive Player of the Year. The second guy is a little bit more debatable, and I'm not just saying that because he wears those ugly colors, but it is the cover athlete, AB, just because um, I'm used to seeing him in the top five. His numbers were a little bit down this year, but still impressive nonetheless. But as AB took Mike Wallace's spot back in the day, and AB most likely won't be a Steeler next year, I wouldn't be too worried as a Steelers fan because look what's happening. Look at number five on this list. Big Ben, Mike Tomlin, I don't know what it is, but they breed receivers in Pittsburgh. Madden 19 was more about who rose to the occasion rather than who fell out. We had two studs on the defensive side of the ball climb their way into 99 status. Number one being Bobby Wagner, the best middle linebacker in the game. Bobby Wagner was a monster this year with 138 tackles. This guy rocketed his Madden numbers. He's got 99 tackle, 99 hit power, 99 play recognition, and 98 pursuit. Absolute run stopper plows through lead blockers with ease so if you haven't enjoyed bobby wagner jump online and be the seahawks he's a fun one to play with next up we have khalil mack a new member he was close as is but outside of chicago bears fans nobody was really talking about the bears defense before khalil mack arrived in chicago um, they were full of hitters, but they really needed that extra charge. They have Akeem Hicks also on that defensive line. So the dual threat that those two provide is something special, and I wouldn't be surprised at all that they win the North again next year. But with Mack leading the charge, they ranked number one in pass rush defense, and that rightfully so earned him the 99 spot. And next up, we're going to talk about the most improved player for Madden 19 ratings be absolutely no surprise to anybody your mvp folks patrick mahomes started the year at just a 79 overall but this man was on fire this year he threw for over 5,000 yards 
53 touchdowns, only 12 interceptions. That, that includes the playoffs. Just an absolute beast. I can't be more happy for the kid. 98 throw power is insane. So this is the most improved player in Madden 19. He went from a 79 overall to a 94 overall. Might be the most improved in history. But as you can imagine, his biggest leaps were in his accuracy. His throw on the run is way up there. 95, one of the best, the best in the game. 98 throw power, which is the best in the game. Just an absolute gem to have on the stick. So if you haven't enjoyed him, get online and play with the Chiefs. You will not regret it. Next up, fellas, I want to talk about the man himself, the undrafted free agent. Philip Lindsay out of Denver. We're all familiar with him. He was almost a weekly play on fantasy towards the end of the year. Can't believe this guy went on draft guys. Check this stat out, fellas. He went for over a thousand yards and he was on very limited carries. He actually averaged more yards per carry than any top 20 running back. So I can't wait to see what this guy does with the full season next year. That's absurd efficiency. He really didn't even get started until week eight. And as far as overall points gained, He's the only one to match Patrick Mahomes in overall points increase. So congratulations to Philip Lindsay, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Although I can think of one other person that <coughs> Baker, Offensive Rookie of the Year. But congratulations to Lindsay. Incredible. He went undrafted. And I'm excited to see what he does next year. Next up, speaking of rookies, guys, we have the Defensive Rookie of the Year, Darius Leonard. Absolute monster. He helped revitalize the, the Colts, really, just as much as Lux return. Um, this man recorded 163 tackles that led the NFL. He had seven sacks, two interceptions, and four four fumbles. Also very impressive. He was able to get 27 tackles in just two playoff games. That's insane. That's, a, that's almost 15 tackles in a playoff game. Um, he's just a tackle machine, and he climbed quickly, rightfully so. He's, he's a 90 tackle as a rookie, 88 pursuit, and 86 play recognition. That play recognition is very important if you didn't already know. That finished him at an 85 overall as a rookie. Stellar year, Darius. Next up, fellas, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm going to keep it brief. There's more information on EA's website about this, but I'm going to summarize it in the top two of each category. My top number one in the good category is George Kittle, tight end out of San Francisco, had absolute monster games multiple times, the most being against the Broncos. He went for over 200 yards. I think it was 210 yards. He had two different catches for 80-plus yards. The man's a beast. He's 91 speed in mutt right now. He had all kinds of explosiveness this year and he proved it huge 14 point boost and it was the third best boost in the game this year only behind Mahomes and Lindsay number two on the good list you know I'm liking this one Nick Chubb out of Georgia the rookie only really got to shine got rid of Hugh Jackson Freddie Freddie Kitchens took over our new head coach Started giving him the rock, man. This guy, this kid really shined. He's going to be something special. Started the year as a 76 overall. Finished at an 84 overall. But the biggest difference here is the speed, fellas. He got a full two-point boost on that speed, which is really rare because they based that off of 40 times. So that's hard to come by. He went from an 88 speed to a 90 speed. So congratulations, Nick Chubb. Really excited for you, kid. Now let's talk about the bad fellas. It's not a full-blown ugly because a lot of this wasn't David Johnson's fault. It was coaching. It was play calling. It was personnel. I mean, they didn't really have a pass threat. Outside of Larry Fitzgerald, their line struggled. He was running into walls of defense all season long. This is a guy that went number one overall in some fantasy leagues or at least the very least the first round of most fantasy leagues. He missed some time and he didn't produce in the time he was given. So that's David Johnson number one on the bad list for total overall he ended up at an 87 overall whereas he started as a 93 a six point drop for david johnson coming in at number two is a huge surprise cornerbacks are coveted in madden they're very important they're often drafted first they're often sought after in trades in franchise mode they're the first ones you draft in mutt draft they're very important in Madden for obvious reasons. And Xavier Rhodes is one of the biggest names in the game. And he took a big hit this year, guys. It was a rough year for the Vikings. Cousins was up and down. You know, Cook was hampered by injury. But the defense took a huge step backwards. This is a elite guy coming into this year. Everybody 
um, knew about him, and he's just taken a huge step in regression. He's down below 90, well below the 91 threshold that we all look for in coverage. He's all the way to 86 man and 84 zone. There's a few different ways we could go with this one, fellas. You know, Kelvin Benjamin only had 25 receptions in Kansas City. That's crazy. He was once regarded as young talents in the league. Donald Penn was plagued by injury in Oakland. He was one of the best offensive line men coming into this year. But I think I'm just going to pick on Jacksonville because, let's face it, nobody had a more disappointing season than the Jaguars, especially after their 2017 campaign. You know, Jacksonville was only one game away from the Super Bowl just last year, and then for them to come out and play the way they did this year, just had to be frustrating as a Jacksonville Jaguars fan. Fournette, his yards per carry were down, and he spent a lot of time on the injured reserve. He started the year as a 90 or an 88 overall, and he finished, as you saw, as just an 82. And then, as I mentioned, for number two on the ugly list, we're going to go with A.J. Boye. Um, big guy in the competitive scene, one of the most popular corners to start the year. And he's down to an 86 man and 88 zone cover, so EA is just digging into the Jaguars as they should after a 2018 disappointing campaign. Hopefully the Jaguars or hopefully for Jaguar fans they can bounce back next year and get these ratings back up. I really appreciate you watching guys. I hope this was informative. I hope you enjoyed today's video fellas. If you want to improve your Madden game drop me a subscribe. If you like today's video drop me a like and I'll see you on the next video.